Yeah, well, he first retired to stud um, at Hill and Dale in his first year, I think at 35,000. Um, was then relocated to uh, his owner's farm, Stonewall Farm. Um, and it was during the 2009 season with his first crop of three rolls. Yeah, you'll remember Rachel Alexandra uh, doing what she did best, winning the Oaks by 20 and then beating the boys in the Preakness. Um, it was during that season that he came on our radar and uh, it was during that time frame that uh, a deal was struck to, to acquire, to acquire his, uh, his, his breeding rights and ownership. And uh, he was duly relocated to uh, John Abel here around June of 2009 and the rest is history. He hit the ground running here and has never really looked back. Obviously, he has climbed to to his high point in his career, which was when he stood for, for $250,000 after that year when he had uh, the seven individual grade one winners, including the two Breeders' Cup winners. Um, but yeah, he's pretty much been at uh, six figures for, for all his life here at uh, John Abel. Broad returns of AP Indy have done very well. Broad returns of Mr. Prospector, really, that's probably his number one cross, I would say. Look in a particular mention to the 49er distorted humor line. That's you know there's some some of the best crosses in the game, um, and there are certainly you know two individual sires that certainly complement their body types complement complement his and is possibly part of the reason for um, their affinity and, and and their joint success. But you know certainly you know those those two lines and, and among many others, he's a pretty friendly horse to breed to um, both physically and, and pedigree wise. But you know, they're certainly some of the ones that jump out. I think they are of sound mind, easy horses to train, trainers love them. Um, if you have a medallia door with ability, um, it's fairly straightforward to realize that ability on the track. Um, and that's certainly one of his strengths and, and, and one of his progeny strengths. So I think that certainly is, is uh, one of their assets. Look, physically, he tends to stamp his stock. He's obviously a beautiful, good-sized horse. He's got a lovely length of body, a real, you know, classic two-turn look, which is no surprise. That's what he was himself as a racehorse. Um, I'd say a lot of his US yearlings have his look. They have a lovely length of body. Um, they're just attractive, good-looking, well-conformed yearlings that are easy on the eye and, and sell accordingly. Um, obviously, I can't quite speak to Australia, but I have seen some when crossed with a different type of mare. Um, you know, a more compact, a more sprinter type that is prevalent in Australia that obviously would lead, lend itself to a slightly different type down there. You know, a stirring gives us a little window um, into, into what that is like. But obviously, you know, the mares do certainly factor in, but he does still tend to stamp um, his own look and his own physique. And I think that's one of the reasons what makes him such a good stallion. From our perspective in our operation, if we're sending a lot of our mirrors to him, we hope to someday, you know, and we have achieved this, is have, have some of his sons in the stallion barn to continue on his legacy. Obviously, you're, the quest for the next next young sire is, is never ending, and to have a, an established stallion who can, you know, produce some of those for you is obviously, you know, the goal. Um, but also to move him into that next tier in terms of his yearling colts becoming uh, or being viewed by the market as potential baby stallions. That certainly puts an extra gloss on his sons, um, uh, you know, at the yearling sales and certainly, you know, can garner the attraction of those syndicates or those stallion operations to, you know, buy these colts with a view to making them top race horses and, 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 and look for careers in the stallion barn. So when a stallion starts to make those waves and get those sons established at stud early, it just has a huge impact on his overall commercial appeal and, and the appeal of his, uh, of his yearling colts going forward. So can't underestimate the importance of that and it's certainly an area where Medaglia Doro has shown he's going to have a lasting legacy.